So um, let's roll this. The uh, what we're going ha- doing in Software Center right now is we're basically starting a new theme called the AI engineering theme, under which we will have a number of uh, activities ongoing. And why do I feel so strongly about that? Well, for me, what I think is uh, really the fact is that AI for me is the new electricity. I mean, one of the major technological changes that we saw about 150 years ago is the transition from steam powered manufacturing to electricity powered manufacturing. But the interesting thing was when we made the shift from steam powered to electricity powered uh, manufacturing. Interestingly enough, what people did was they changed the big steam engine in the middle of the factory and they put a big electric uh, engine into the same spot as where they had the steam engine sitting. And they continued to distribute the power that the man- that the factory needed in the same way as they always did with these axles and these kind of bands. And it took actually around 25 years for people in manufacturing to figure out that it was much better to give every individual machine its own electric motor rather than to have one massive mechanical or electrical engine sitting in the middle. And that is exactly what um, I believe we are in the stage of AI. Not in the same way, of course, but what I believe is that there is a lot of... um, uh, a lot of um, uh, very early stages of what AI actually is about. Um, what I would like to stress, I mean, if people like Sergey Brin say that uh, artificial intelligence is the most significant development computing in my lifetime, I think we're actually on to something in that um, uh, there is a lot happening. And within artificial intelligence, we see that we have traditional AI, we have machine learning, we have deep learning taking place as well. And I have to ask you to apologize me for one more second because Marlon is calling me again. Hi, Marlon. Okay, I'll d- join that one for just a sec. Thanks. Okay, I will. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's part of my interruption, but I have to do one more thing and I'll continue with my presentation. Back in a minute. Sorry for the mess, but we're back and we are continuing. Jan, uh, yes. we got a bit of uh, background noise from some people. Uh, they want to mute. And, and I see Cecilia yeah. very active. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good, very good point. So if everyone could uh, be so kind to mute if they're not talking, that would be, I think, quite helpful. So thank you very much. So why is AI happening now? Well, I think everyone knows the big data era, the increase in computing power, the algorithmic improvements and the better tooling that are taking place. But I think that especially uh, the amount of data available thanks to the big data era has helped a lot, as well as GPUs. When we start to look at what we see happen, there is an interesting situation in that Lots of people are now starting to think about, oh, let's use AI for this problem. I get a bunch of data, I take a neural network or another machine learning model, I train it, I get a great success, and then there is an outcome that results in, oh, let's go and let's deploy, and then when things are deployed, it actually proves that things fail. So the prototype is successful, but the industrial deployment is not successful. And why is this happening is one of the questions that we have been asking ourselves. And this is an old paper from 2015 that many of you probably have seen. But what we see is that for software engineering to be successful, what you need is more than just the ML code. You also need the all the boxes around it that you actually see, ranging from configuration to the data pipelines, to feature extraction, to data verification, et cetera, et cetera. And we see this also from one of the studies that I did with one of the companies that we work a lot with, Baltarion, where we see that there are all kinds of challenges that have 
either higher business impact and are harder to solve or have lower business impact and are easier to solve, but that in principle require uh, uh, things to be addressed around development, production and organization. I'm going through this very quickly because I'm looking to give Alberto as much of an opportunity as possible to present his work. Where the effort goes, well, what we see is that everyone, if you talk about the four stages in uh, in uh, uh, in artificial intelligence model creation, it's about getting the data, creating the models, training and evaluating, and then deploying. And what we see is that everyone is talking about algorithms and about training and evaluating and those kind of things. But if we look at, so the attention really goes to those stages. But if we look at where the real effort goes in most companies, it is actually in assembling the proper high quality data sets. And that's why we have a presentation on this by SEMA at the end of the afternoon at a quarter past three today, uh, and actually the industrial production quality deployment. There's a lot of challenges around this. And why does this happen? Well, I often compare um, traditional computing science or data science to be uh, in this way. I mean, on the one hand, you have a little doghouse, and on the other hand, you have skyscrapers. And what you see is that when you're building a doghouse, and this is typically what you do when you're prototyping with machine learning or deep, deep learning, it's small scale, of only a few people are involved, it's pilots and prototypes, there's of no or very little societal value, and there is uh, actually no or very little risk associated with this. And when we look at uh, building skyscrapers, it's large scale, it's hundreds or thousands of people, it's industrial critical development, uh, it's high societal value, and there's actually high risk associated. And what we see is that most academic research focuses on um, the small scale pilot and prototype stuff, uh, which is very much concerned with the studying the applicability of technology. And then there is an other type of research, which we call engineering research. And engineering research is concerned with studying the benefit and scalability of technologies in an empirical real world context. And that's actually what we are concerned with and, and really want to spend our time on. How do we make sure that all those wonderful solutions and approaches that we have within artificial intelligence can be deployed in large scale environments with a high degree of reliability associated with them. We're not the only ones who are talking about this. This is from KPMG from a year or two back, where Brad Fisher from KPMG says that AI deployment of integrated and scalable solutions across the business requires more than just data scientists. And one of the biggest problems facing business is getting AI from pilot phase to scalable deployment. And if you look at the five most important jobs in AI, then you see that three of the five jobs, AI architect, AI product manager, and AI software engineer are the biggest, are the biggest ones. So um, if we look at this, I already showed this slide in the middle, but uh, in the introduction, but I wanted to reinforce this a little bit. We're talking about experimentation and prototyping. That's where we see many companies work. Then we move towards non-critical deployment of machine learning and deep learning components. So the product works even without these components, but is a little better when uh, uh, they are uh, not present. Oh, uh, but when they are functioning, then you move to critical deployment when the machine learning and deep learning model has to work, otherwise the product doesn't work. Then you move to cascading deployment. That's when the output of one model is used as the input of the next model. And then we move to what we call autonomous machine learning and deep learning models, where even the retraining and the monitoring and logging and everything else is fully autonomous and part of the system. We often talk about what we call the holistic DevOps model. I'm going through this very quickly, but if you're interested, I'm happily take more time offline to talk you through this. But what we also see is that AI doesn't live in isolation. It is actually part of a larger system context. And in that larger system context, some software is built using traditional requirements-driven developments. Some software is driven using outcome or data-driven development when you have a clear value hypotheses of what you would like to achieve and your development teams or R&D teams are developing A-B experiments or other mechanisms in order to measure whether you are actually uh, delivering on the value that you would like to, uh, like to create or not. 
And then finally, there is AI-driven development. And the way that we see the world evolving is that every system that we know that is of any relevant, uh, any relevance, uh, societal relevance, has all three types of components present. All three types of components are present using continuous, uh, are subject to uh, continuous deployment, and all components are expected to provide behavioral data for monitoring and logging in order for us to understand how the system is performing in real time. So this holistic DevOps framework is really what is important. The last thing that I wanted to share before we go to conclusions and we let uh, Alberto in is that we have developed this AI research agenda. You can download the paper from my ArcSIF page in case you're interested. Uh, but what I wanted to quickly stress is that we are doing work on what we call automated experimentation, which is systems that fully autonomously experiment with their own behavior in order to become better according to some uh, uh, desired outcomes that we're looking for. Together with Volvo Cars, we're looking in the context of an FFI project to hire a PhD student to look into A-B testing and uh, hopefully also into A-B testing of models. We have Iris, an industrial PhD student from uh, Siemens who is looking into operational data from online systems and how you can convert that operational data into tactical and then strategic data in order to make strategic decisions. And one of the things that she's been looking at is, can I predict churn? So that is paying customers that turn into non-paying customers. Can I predict churn by observing the behavior of, the, of those customers? So that's one of the things that she's been looking at. Aiswarya is looking into data pipelines and uh, data versioning and dependency management. Lucy, a postdoc, is looking into monitoring and logging and also data linter. So how do I continuously in data streams and also next to data sets control the quality of data uh, so that I identify and detect when data is out of um, uh, uh, is out of range or is missing or that statistical distributions are changing over time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Theodore, one of our newly started PhD students, is looking into automated labeling. We have Hugo, who's looking into heterogeneous hardware. Menu is looking into design methods and design processes for building uh, machine learning and deep learning models. Rolf is looking into the whole field of autonomously improving systems. And Hong Yi is looking into federated machine learning and deep learning. And I wanted to stress this because if, if any of you are interested in uh, these specific topics, um, except for Aiswadia and Menu, the PhD students are already paid for basically through different funding programs. Uh, and we will, we're always interested in bringing uh, additional cases in. So what we see is that AI is really at the verge of disrupting what is happening in society. You have to become world-class at working with AI if you want to stay competitive, otherwise you risk disruption. And what we have seen in our research is that productifying AI, ML and DL is actually a major challenge. And one of the companies that I think has been quite successful in exploring different real value adding machine learning and deep learning solutions and moving towards productifying them and rolling them out is actually Tetra Pak. And that's why I am really happy. And Alberto, I hope you don't mind me using this picture because this was the only picture that I could find of you on the internet. But this is where I was really happy that uh, Alberto had uh, decided to um, uh, to agree to give a talk on what is happening at Tetra Pak uh, with respect to AI, machine learning, and deep learning. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Alberto to um, uh, share with us what Tetra Pak has been experiencing over the last uh, years since you joined the company from your uh, previous engagements. So and with that, I would like, I will start to sh stop sharing my screen and invite Alberto to share his and to uh, share your wisdom with us, Alberto. Thank you very much.